Those are very much, not so much Greece being sort of put to the back seat now. Italy very much at the forefront of, of most people's minds, rightly so. James, there's only one number that the market is watching right now, and that's the 10-year bond yields on Italy's debt. And if we have a look at Italy's bond yields, once again, a post-euro record overnight, 6.67%. And we know that's been on the rise, and as long as that continues to rise, we are going to see cautiousness in the marketplace and investors on the sidelines, and that's exactly what we saw today. We only saw $3.7 billion worth of, being, of stock being traded today, so it's very hard to read anything into the performance of the Australian market. In fact, if we look to the currency markets where there's a lot more liquidity, then we can see exactly what investors' um, I guess minds, uh, thoughts are around. And if we have a look at the Australian dollar versus the US currency, this is how it's traded over the last 12 hours. You can see it's been a bit of a bumpy ride, and we did see some numbers out at 11.30 a.m. where we did see our trade surplus decreasing in the month of September, as well as the NAB business survey showing that conditions deteriorated in in October but you can see that the Aussie dollar has seen a downward trajectory today so really a risk off environment for the Aussie dollar and that's a sharp contrast to the Aussie share market which managed a gain of 0.5 percent on very light volumes defensives once again the place to be so we did see some support for those defensive areas but all up uh, Defensives, I guess, uh, was one area which the market avoided. It was the growth sectors which did well today, especially the banking stocks. And we see uh, stocks like ANZ and National Australia Bank going ex-dividend this week on the 10th of November. So those two stocks likely to outperform in that banking space. And we saw the banks shining through today. Brit stories that are around today, and there were indeed a few around, Julia. One of the ones that caught my attention, or caught the market's attention, was obviously Westfield's uh, quarterly update to the market. Look, what did you make of the numbers? This was a bit of a strange update to the market. So we did see this quarterly update coming out, and we know that conditions have been tough in Australia for retailers. And in fact, if we have a look at the Australian centres and retail sales, down by 1.7%. And yet in Australia and New Zealand, we've seen rents in the period rising by 3.8%, mm. the strongest. So it looks like a little bit of a disconnect between you know some of the retailers that take out our spaces in these Westfield shopping centres, and the rents still rising in these areas. If we break it down though things are looking better in New Zealand where retail sales were up by 0.8 percent in the UK where things were looking quite flat and in the US where specialty stores saw a jump of 5.7 percent but if we have a look at rents Australia and New Zealand rising the uh, strongest up by 3.8 percent we also saw the US rents rising by 3.3 percent but the UK rents actually fell we have a look at Westfield and exposure to this particular stock. One of the things that investors need to be aware of is the huge development pipeline that they have. And this is really going to be a growth area for the stock. Westfield, instead of making acquisitions, likes to build its projects up from scratch. And while that uh, offers potential upside to, in terms of the share price, it also offers potential risk as well. In the past, this company has come out to say they're looking to sell about $2 billion worth of assets in the US as well as the UK, but there's really no high Hurry then. We've seen no signs of those sales and Westfield shares up around about 1% today. Uh, I suppose market story today was Fairfax, obviously in terms of the, the, the pricing of the IPO for, uh, for Trade Me. Um, it seems interesting that as soon, and we, talk, we spoke about it a little bit earlier in the day, but the fact that they start getting traction, start getting some, some good earnings and so forth from a lot of their companies or a lot of their subsidiaries, a lot of their assets, as soon as that happens, they flog them off. The big thing with Fairfax is the large amount of debt overhang that they have, and that's really behind the sale of this stake in Trade Me. They aren't selling the whole stake, they are selling 34% of their stake in Trade Me, which means they still have the majority stake in the company, but it is all because of that debt overhang. So they're going to sell this stake. The gross proceeds will be around about just over $500 million if you include the debt component of it. And if you have a, a look at what it's going to be used for, it is going to be used to pay off that. Uh, debt, deleverage the balance sheet and hopefully a little bit more flexibility in terms of dividends and shareholders are going to be hoping for an increase in dividends. So if we do see a dividend payout ratio around the 70% level for Fairfax this financial year, we'll, we'll be seeing a dividend yield of around about 8 to 9%. Yeah. Of course, if we have a look at this IPO, it is underwritten, so some of the risk is taken off the table even though there's a, a cost related there, but it will be at $2.70 New Zealand dollars. And if we have a look at Fairfax as a company and 
as a as a stock it has been struggling and that's because of the media environment the advertising revenue especially some of from the old media sources such as uh, newspapers magazines and the advertising revenue seems to be moving to that digital uh, that digital model so we are seeing not only a very weak advertising environment but also some structural changes going on within the industry so Fairfax shares down around about 35% over the last year and down over 1% today yeah indeed Fairfax